Hi, it's Amy. And it's Tim from Go With Less. Thank you so much for joining us here at our channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorite topics, and that's travel hacking. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about a question that I am asked all the time. Actually, we're both asked this question. I'm all asked, the time. ask Tim. <laughs> so they know that Tim doesn't uh, respond as often, so people write to me and say, what does Tim think about this? And that question is, what is the best travel credit card? Why don't you just give an answer and we can be done with this video in like 10 uh, seconds. If it were only so easy. <laughs> we hope that you'll stay tuned for today's video. If travel is your passion, we talk about it every single Wednesday and we would love for you to join us on our channel. Please subscribe over here in the corner so that you can see what we're doing every Wednesday. And with that, let's get started. Circling back to our question, what is the best credit card to sign up for when it comes to points and miles? The short answer is there really isn't a short answer to this question. <laughs> These are the kinds of things you might want to ask yourself if you're looking to add a card to your wallet. If somebody does give you just an answer outright, this is the best thing to sign up for. I ask would, some questions. Ask Do some, questions. some research. Like, why is this the best card? So if we were going to, if you ask us the question beyond the things we're going to share here, we would actually ask you a further series of questions to try and qualify and make sure that you're getting the right card for you because there isn't a right card for everybody. The first question we're going to ask ourselves is, is in the first year, is this card going to return $500 worth of value? So the points that you're going to earn or the cash back that you're going to earn, the first year you have the card, is it going to put at least $500 worth of value in your pocket. And that is over and above any fees. If you're paying zero fee, we would need it to have $500 of value. If it's a $450 fee, it's gonna be near $1,000 in value in travel rewards for us to sign up for that card. That's right. As you start your search for a new card to add to your wallet, you shouldn't have a hard time finding a card that's gonna meet this criteria. But certainly don't sign up for anything unless it's gonna provide at least $500 worth of value to you. And that's our criteria. You may have different criteria. Ours is $500. We'd like to know what's yours down below if you already have an established criteria that you're following. The second thing that we're going to ask ourselves is can we or do we have a plan to meet the minimum spending requirements that are going to be there in order to earn this hefty sign up bonus. What a minimum spending requirement is is whenever you go to sign up for a new card and it's going to have a, a hefty bonus they're going to have an expectation that you're going to spend a certain amount of money within a defined time frame in order to earn the bonus. Typically, that's a 90-day window, and the amount can vary anywhere from $1,500. I've seen as high as $10,000 to earn a sign-up bonus, and you have to spend this all within 90 days. If you don't spend that amount of money that they put in front of you within that 90-day window, you'd miss out on the bonus. And Number so, one sin of travel hacking is missing your sign-up bonus because right. you didn't meet the minimum spend. So you have to go and do the calculations. Make sure that whatever you're looking to sign up for, that you can meet that minimum spending in that 90-day window. I'm going to say, Tim throws out a big number, $10,000 minimum spend. That's a lot. I think that you're getting more than $500 if you're of spending. Course, okay, yes. so I just want to put that yeah. out for people who might not know and be like a little freaked out, like, holy cow, $10,000, that's a lot. We don't even spend that much. How would that even happen? We get it. That would have a bigger sign-up bonus. We're looking for sign-up bonuses that align more with our monthly spending. credit card spending. And with that, we're gonna recommend that you look at how much you spend on average on your credit cards a month and take that, multiply it by three, and that might be a good number if you're looking at a three-month requirement for spending, that might be a good number to sign up for. And if it is something really small, like $500 spending, you're probably going to get a really small bonus. If you're spending $3,000 uh, over three months in credit cards, you might want to have a $3,000 minimum requirement so you maximize the opportunities for your travel bonus. The third thing that we want to mention or that we take into consideration is, is this sign up going to impact something better that we want to sign up for in the future? What Which is a bit of a crystal ball situation. That's exactly right. So here's a for example. Chase has an amazing line of credit cards, but Chase has this Amaze. amazing, <laughs> but they have this rule, and this rule isn't, if you call Chase, they wouldn't tell you they have this rule, but it's well-known. And it's known. not in their documentation. It's not in their documentation, but it's a well-known rule that if you've signed up for more than five credit cards with any issuer in the last 24 months, this is called the 524 rule, they will not give you a new credit card. 
They will they, deny you. Done. You're done. You're denied there are, until the 24 months is over. That's right. And you're out. You're out of this 24 month window. There is a great set of cards that Chase offers specifically. Amy just got through signing up for a couple of these that allow you to earn a Southwest Airlines companion pass just by signing up for two credit cards. If we did the wrong things and signed Amy up for a bunch of credit cards two or three months ago, she wouldn't or a year qualify ago. for signing up for these new cards, and therefore we couldn't earn the companion pass. So it's very important that you understand your overall big picture of what you're looking to do with credit card signups and make sure that you're picking the right cards at the right time. And since Tim mentioned the companion pass, I'm just going to mention what it is real quickly because it's one of the best hacks in the travel space. And that means that when I hold the companion pass, I'm allowed to bring a guest on any flight on Southwest that I take, whether I pay in cash or with points. That's unbelievable. And it's the year that I earn it as well as the next year. We're looking to earn it because of these credit cards at the beginning of this coming January. We'll have it all of 2019 and then the entire 2020. We've had this for the past two years. It just expires this month and it's been absolutely killer. We've gone everywhere from Belize to New York City and one person goes free. So that's the companion pass. As a couple, we have a unique opportunity to have Tim apply for all the cards he wants and to keep my credit history kind of clean so that we have the opportunity to apply for a new card that we really, really want that's an amazing opportunity. And we've learned the hard way because both of us were filled up and were denied from really amazing cards in the past. So now I keep my card history pretty clear-ish and Tim goes crazy on the non-chase cards. And that leads us to our fourth rule. That rule is you need to have a good grasp of what's going on with the marketplace for a card you're looking to sign up for. This well, isn't like something you have to research for all no, your life. You just need to do a little Googling when you're looking to sign up for a card to understand what the history has been for offers associated with the card. As an example, the Capital One Venture card, typically the sign-up bonus for that card is about 50,000 points, which equates to $500, and then there's no annual fee. Just last month, they had an accelerated offer. It just lasted for a month, but it was for a whole month. They had a $750 or 75,000 point sign-up bonus. Understanding that that market is dynamic like that allows you to not just sign up for the $500 bonus, but when something great comes around, you know it's going to be great and you grab it while it's hot. I've seen that card sort of be all over the place, but $500 is sort of the standing place where, where the bonus is going to be. So you might want to wait around if you're going to sign up for that card until it comes back around and there's a $600 bonus. I don't know that $750 will ever return. So you sort of have to roll the dice with these things. However, it is pretty common for it to be up a little bit. So you might not want to sign up for that card when it's $500. You might want to sign up when it's $600 or ideally when it's $750. But understanding what's going on with the history of the card, if they just wrapped up a bonus, for instance, this $750 bonus that they had, it will probably be a while before they have another accelerated bonus. So if that were a card you were looking to add to your wallet, you might want to wait a little while. Maybe look for another card. And that $750 bonus, it wasn't announced that it was going to last a month. All of a sudden, it was completely over, shut down, no peep about it at all, just gone. So when you see a good opportunity, jump on it. That wraps up the four things that we typically look at when we're looking to add a new credit card to our wallet. Next travel hacking video, we're going to talk about the types of points that are available in the marketplace, and we'll talk about which ones we think are the most valuable. And as the person who books all of our travel with those points, this is a topic that I'm really into. When it gets into the credit card nitty gritty, that's Tim's baby, but using those points, that's my baby. So I'll hopefully talk a little bit more next time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, please subscribe below if you like today's video. Please give, give it a, a thumbs, thumbs up. up and uh, share please... it with your friends, friends who are like, what is this whole travel hacking thing? We have a whole bunch of videos. I'm going to include a playlist at the end of this video that shows all of our travel hacking videos. We are answering the questions that we are asked the most often when it comes to travel hacking. So because of that, we know this is asked all the time. Please share it on your social media. People ask us this, as Tim mentions, almost every single day. If you would leave any comments, any questions, was anything confusing? What other topics would you like to see below? Please add comments below. Instead of 
messaging us directly privately, it would be really helpful to do that underneath publicly so everyone can learn from your questions because we tend to get a lot of private messages after videos and that's okay. It'd be really nice though if other people could benefit from that education as well. So with that, thank you for watching and we'll see you next Wednesday.